Excellent. It's 20 past. Let's get this session rolling. Thanks for coming. It's very many people here. I'm glad to see that. I'm going to talk about the TV series called Hackad or Hacked that I was one of the, the hackers in. Uh, quickly, I'm Linus Kvarnhammer. I'm a cybersecurity consultant. I run my own company and I'm doing penetration testing of applications and networks. I've been doing that for the last 10 years. I have a developer background and also a few years as a Windows sysadmin. So we did this uh, TV program which aired uh, like a year ago. The hackers you see on the screen are Jesper Larsson, David Jacobi, Gene Ramsmack, and me. And we did six episodes. By the way, how many have seen it here by a show of hands? Oh, so 50-50 maybe. So I'm going to talk about two of the episodes. Uh, but first, we had one episode where we hacked private people, 20, 20 of them. They kind of volunteered via Facebook. Uh, episode two, I'm going to talk more about later. Uh, episode three was the ransomware theme where we attacked a small IT company. Uh, episode four is the best, uh, according to me. It's a fun episode. I'm not in it. Maybe that's why. I'm not sure. But it's a smart home which is a bit too smart and pretty comical. Uh, episode five, uh, two celebrities in Stockholm. I'm going to cover that in this talk. And then the last uh, episode was a themed uh, threats from nation states where Telenor uh, was the target. So uh, it's good to know that the time budget for each of these episodes was three recording days and one calendar week. So would we have done this the regular way, we would have, would have used much more time. Uh, and you can still see these uh, episodes online on SVT Play, and there are English subtitles that, that Ginny has uh, made herself, and you can find that on her GitHub. Okay, so episode five, two celebrities in Stockholm. We uh, were supposed to hack one Christoph Appelquist, and the other one, I had no clue who she was. But I was uh, quickly informed by my daughter that she's very famous, and she has one million followers. So we went up to Stockholm for like uh, three, four days. We started off with Therese Lindgren. Turned out that she's unhackable, at least when it comes to the competence of us four. Uh, so, but it's interesting with failures as well. It makes for drama on the TV show. Uh, I guess, and, uh, but we, we threw everything we had at her. SVT, SVT wanted me to take a selfie with her, do like a spontaneous selfie where she didn't know who I was. And while we did that stakeout, we noticed that her uh, Mercedes there was uh, parked illegally. So we photographed that and used that in a phishing campaign later on uh, as like a SMS fish with a fake parking site uh, for a parking ticket. We followed that up with a phone call. She did not, fa um, she did not, she did not bite on that. Uh, we, or Ginny, made a really good phishing site that redirected to her YouTube site with a phishing for her login to a YouTube site that failed. We did Wi-Fi hacking on uh, outside her apartment. So this is me in some of these kind of recording spy glasses. Uh, David there is holding the antenna. This is outside our apartment. We're trying to hack her Wi-Fi. That failed. While we were at her door, we prepared a letter with a USB stick with Mac malware. Uh, and we wrote a nice letter that she was uh, a nominee for some kind of award. So please plug in the USB stick because you have more information there. She did not do that. So we failed miserably. What we did not do was we did not crash her car and steal her laptop, but someone else did that the other day and she did not have a password on her laptop. Uh, so I, I, I hope she recovers from this. We failed though, this uh, uh, yeah, drug addict burglar uh, succeeded. <laughs> on a more happy note, uh, Christopher is not as unhackable as Therese. Christopher Appelqvist is a comedian, host of a TV show called Svenska Nyheter, Swedish News. Satirical news. Uh, in this case, he's making fun of Gunnebo's CEO, which is a Swedish security company that had a data breach. 
and the CEO says something like, well, the hackers, uh, they, uh, they cracked two, pa we had double passwords and they uh, got in anyway. And he's making fun of them. So we thought if we hack Christopher, we will make fun of him publicly on one of his social media channels. That was our goal. <laughs> so what we started doing, which you can do if you, uh, if you target individual individuals or companies, you can look in public database dumps. So security, uh, security consultants and criminals alike, we download a bunch of dumps, which is leaked databases from previously hacked sites. So we found Christoph Appelqvist's um, email address there. So you can see he had, at some point, used Katamaran as a password. And he also had used Hata Esi, which is, in English, is hate the train, the public train company, <laughs> which we found a little bit comical. So we put these aside, or we tried them out on his, on his uh, public accounts. They did not work. And a, a slight side note on, on these uh, password dumps, because it's pretty interesting. This is a, it's a forum where you, or this is actually taken down by the FBI now. But this and other similar forums can be used to buy, trade, or download free leaked databases. So that's what we do. And on my computer, it looks something like this. A bunch of terabytes downloaded for, or in this case, only one terabyte, but uh, we have more in other places, uh, with plain text database dumps. So we search, search these for interesting email addresses or companies. So just as a, an example here, I searched for uh, the Swedish um, parliament, the domain name riksdagen.se. What you can find in these dumps, you can find plain text passwords, depending on how they, uh, the developers may have stored their passwords. Uh, you can find encrypted passwords, like in the Adobe breach from 2013, which I actually was here at Aradev uh, showcasing or showing in the, in, in, a, uh, in the exhibition area. This is interesting because this is encrypted. So the last, second to last column here is encrypted passwords. So if you look closely, you can see that there are different lengths, which is block size lengths. Only there you can derive some information. You can also see the last column is password hints. So you could see that someone has Riksdagslösen as a password hint. Mm, not very good, per perhaps. Sharing a password with a short password with some random website on the in or not Adobe and also your workplace. But you can also, and what you should find is mostly hashed passwords, as you probably know. That's how you should store passwords. But just because it's interesting, uh, let's look quickly on the Adobe breach. So let's search for a few of these. Uh, let's see, look at the a few of the users with the riksdagen.se domain. And Leif Pagrotsky there, the second to last one, he had a password hint of ort, which means city. So what you can do if you store passwords like this, you could, of course, search for everyone with the same password as him. And it turns out that there are many pass many users pick the same password, and then you can read all the password hints in plain text. And there's, there's one particularly interesting, Hultsfred is a Swedish city, who had the password hint, best festival, it's a festival city. So Leif Pagotzi's password was probably Hultsfred. So even though those things are encrypted, there might be other security vulnerabilities that disclose sensitive information. But back to Christopher. We had the uh, Katamaran and Hata Esi. It didn't work. He had a limited online presence. I mean, he's not owning a huge corporation uh, where we could hack the internal network. He's not employed with SVT. He's a consultant. So we were sitting in Stockholm after failing with Therese there on the, on the left uh, in the hotel room thinking that we have one day. Yeah, Max, the producer on the right, he said, uh, tomorrow morning at 9, nine o'clock, we're going to go there and have an interview with, uh, with uh, Christopher, and then you're going to go there 8 p.m. in the evening, and uh, then you're going to tell him how you hacked him. And we were like, uh, to do that, we need, we need some kind of uh, shortcut or leverage. So if you've seen the episodes in, in episode number one, um, Jesper was a mole, an uh, infiltrator. So we decided Jesper, should, he needs to be a mole again. So in the morning meeting with Christoph, uh, Jesper dressed up as a sound technician, brought the Mac malware we used in episode one, plugged it into Christoph's computer, 
And outside in the car, me and David were sitting, controlling the server to which the malware was connecting. And obviously, the computer was open, unlocked and open. Uh, and Christophe, when the interview was finished, he could have closed the laptop at any point. So we just had to download as much files as possible, as many files as possible. And one of the files we download, downloaded was the Chrome browser's stored passwords. The password manager in Chrome stores a SQLite database or has a SQLite database with usernames and websites in plain text and then encrypted passwords. So we have this database. We can see that there are like Instagram, FTP servers and stuff, but we don't have the passwords because they're encrypted. But we have this file and we have a bunch of other files. And looking into this, you realize that the encrypted passwords are anything that is encrypted is encrypted with a key. Where's the key? The key is stored in key pass, or oh, sorry, in, not in key pass, in keychain, in the MacBook's keychain. And both of these pictures, by the way, are random Google images. They are not from uh, Christopher's computer. So if we could open the keychain, we will have the encryption key for, for the Chrome database, which will disclose hundreds of passwords to us. But this is, of course, also closed or uh, encrypted, protected by the password of the MacBook, uh, regular MacBook login functionality. So what we need to do now, we need to guess as many passwords as possible and hopefully get lucky. Because we've downloaded uh, the keychain file, we can crack, we can guess passwords offline. But we don't want to do this brute force and dumb, we want to do this smart. So what's at least my method, but a common method is combining very common passwords, like these you see here. This is from my list of the most common passwords for a company. And you replace company with your company. And you think, uh, who, who, who is dumb enough to use these kind of passwords? Well, pretty many people are. So if you get into the internal network of a company and you have no domain account, you can stop with these to every user and you will have some qu pretty quickly. That's a good first step. So some, to show this, a recent internal pen test I did for a, a company, I became domain admin. What I did then is I extracted all the hashes from the Active Directory domain controller, which was 55,000. I put them into my cracking process. And in roughly one day, I cracked 45,000, 80% of these. And I, I made some statistics on them. So 218 contained the Swedish word sommar, summer, in some variations, like special characters, years, etc. And 2000, uh, 229 passwords contain winter. Actually, the Swedish uh, word winter. And if you learn how, to, how people pick passwords, you learn more. What about months? The default configuration for a Windows environment is to change passwords every three months. You probably had that at some point. So what, what do people do then? If you search for the passwords, or if you search for months in the passwords I cracked, I got these numbers. Sorting them by uh, frequency, we get this. And the bottom we see November, January, December, which should tell you that I probably did the pen test somewhere around February, January. So knowing that, that could also be useful when you go into a bigger company that change passwords every three months guess months and uh, a year, exclamation marks, stuff like that. So some knowledge about common passwords together goes into my cracking process, uh, password cracking process, together with a huge commonly known list. So there's a big password list, list out there with 14 million passwords called RockU. I use that combined with the stuff I put in myself, use variations of that. And this goes, of course, very quickly. So for every word in the word list, add numbers, lead characters, special characters, uppercase, lowercase. And eventually, when I've exhausted those options, I go to Bruce Fort, Bruce Force, brute force patterns like this. So a pattern saying like the first letter is an uppercase, then you have lowercase, and then you have a digit. And then you go to another pattern. And these patterns can be exhausted pretty quickly, up to 8, 9, 10. Uh, length, uh, character in length. And the speed is, of course, interesting. So these are some hash speeds that could be interesting to compare. 
If you look at row number four, you will see MTLM hashes. This is typical or normal Active Directory. 50 billion uh, per second, you can guess, with one of these graphics cards. But back to Christopher, the one, the one we wanted to crack there was the keychain. And you can see the Apple keychain, 1.8 million. So that's the speed with one of these graphics cards that we are guessing. So we are in the hotel room. We are guessing away. Uh, Ginny is sitting at home uh, with her GPUs. She has several of them. Uh, I was cracking with my laptop, and we have this list of passwords. And we are coming nowhere. We are not cracking this password. Uh, time goes by. 8 PM is getting closer. And I had an idea thinking of how do you pick passwords? Yeah, you, sometimes you use the kids. Uh, personal number, secure social security number, years of your own birthday, your wife maybe. So I thought I'd call uh, Skatteverket, the Swedish tax authority. So I said, Christoph Appelqvist on this address, give, him, give me please his uh, social security number and the, the ones for his kids and his uh, fiance. And I put that into the list and it looked something like this. And I ran the process again and boom, it was we got a hit on Hata SJ, Hate, the train company, and the year of one of his kids' birthday, and a special character. Given that, we could unlock the keychain. We can get the encryption key for, for the Chrome database, and we can unlock that. Armed with that, Jesper, who was there in the morning, came back in the evening for the evening meeting. We were um, on, on a remote conference call, David and me, and uh, Ginny. And the first thing Jesper told Christopher was, have you checked your Instagram? And he was like, no, no, you haven't, you haven't. Yes, we had. So we made a, we made a, a little note to himself from himself that we recommend double or even triple passwords for computer security. Uh, but he took it like a champ. We showed him remotely, using the Trojan we installed in the morning, we popped up all his passwords in plain text on his own computer. Uh, and, and he was like, this is tough. This is not only my passwords. Uh, and he admitted to being owned. So uh, that was that for that episode. Uh, episode number two, Helsing Boys Hem. Helsing Boys Hem is a city housing, communal housing company owning 12,000 apartments together with them. And they, they are really, uh, all, all the people and companies that participated here should have a big, they should have a lot of cred because they're brave enough to, to be hacked on TV. Uh, together with them, we decided that we have two targets inside Helsing Boys M. One target is the, the database of all the people living in their apartments because they have protected identities, like protected housing for women, political refugees, etc. And that's one target. Another target is the, the queue for, for, uh, for getting an apartment because I have a point-based queue. And we decided to do this in a combination of social engineering and network hacking. So we decided we're going to build a Raspberry Pi that we, when we plant it on the internal network, it will call out, basically VPN out to our cloud server such that we can get back in. And we're going to place that somewhere in the internal uh, office premises. But they have a new, uh, they had a new office with these pretty good doors. So when you open them, they close shut pretty quickly afterwards, which makes it hard to tailgate to follow uh, an employee in. in. Uh, also, this was pandemic time, so there were pretty few uh, people coming and going. So, and we had successfully many times before done a thing where we invite ourselves. So that's what we decided to do. We decided to contact the receptionist, email the receptionist, tell them from an employee saying that there's a consultant coming. So what you're seeing here is a domain that we bought ourselves, helsingboyshem.se. That's the real domain, but we bought it with an I. So the lowercase l there, letter number three, is actually an I. And of course, that it's tricky to see, especially when it's, it looks like this, but depending on the mail, email client, it might actually show us a, a proper eye, but still difficult to see. And then we took the IT manager's uh, name and email signature and made a perfect uh, <coughs> email account in his name. 
and emailed the reception and told them that there's a consultant coming and his name, name is David Jacobi, one of the, the other hackers. David dressed the part, he's really confident, he had his uh, uh, shoulder bag with a hidden camera, walked up to the reception, they read the email, they believed the email, but they had a process or some kind of habit of calling, every, every time calling the person that you were visiting. David said something like, well, he will come later. Uh, Rickard will come later. So I need, just need a conference room. And she was like, ah, we need to call Rickard. So they called him, but it was busy. And why was it busy? Because we were calling him from the outside. So we made, made up some reason to call him and delayed him as long as possible for this par part to work as smoothly as possible. But access denied, we were owned. Uh, they did exactly as their process said, and they kept on it. They just kept calling Rick Richard, and eventually he answered, and he said, no, they are not invited. So we were pretty bummed out, and we had lunch at Vela in, uh, in Helsingborg, and the, the, one of the technicians from SVT said, well, we could check out the, the old office. They recently switched offices. So we went back to, to the old office, or not went back, we went to the old office, looked, uh, looked around, it looked really empty. There were some jackets, some bags, but no people, no door, doors open or anything, no reception. So we, this was March, so we got back in the car, checked out the Wi-Fi, and then we see one person getting into one of the doors. So we got, some ho got our hopes up. I took the bag with the hidden camera with the Raspberry Pi, and I went to stand by this door. And eventually, it, uh, a person came, opened the door, and I grabbed it before it closed. So maybe you can see here, there's a small gap. This is from the camera in the bag. And I walked inside. And I could find no people, but I could hear some people talking. So I just, now I need to find somewhere to plug in the Raspberry Pi and give it power. And I want to have lights turn on, right? Because when I plug it in, I want to see these blinking lights because that indicates that it's connected to a switch on the other side. It's actually the only fake scene in the TV series. This is recorded under my desk at home, because when I plugged it in, the, the bag was, uh, with the camera was pointing somewhere else. It's a bit nervous doing this. So uh, when I plugged it in, I of course ran to the safest place in an office, which is the toilet. So I forgot to lock the door. I stood in the toilet with my jacket on, AirPods, and I called David on the outside and said, like, can you check to see if you have connection with the Raspberry Pi? And he said, yeah, but your, my computer is in the bag you have. OK. So then I called Jesper, and Jesper was driving from Gothenburg. And he was like, I have police after me. But uh, yeah, 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 of course. I don't know why he said that, but he added to the nervousness. So he, he uh, took off to some kind of a rest stop, what do you call it, parking space, SSH'd into the cloud server, Check the network and boom, he writes there. 1539, we have access to Helsingborg Sem's internal network. Then I hear people coming out, standing outside the toilet door talking. And I realized I didn't lock the door. And I had my airports and a bag and standing looking in the mirror talking to someone. So I thought, yeah, fuck it. Uh, I uh, flushed the toilet, walked out, showed them the back or just turned the back on them. No one noticed anything, and we went out. Uh, drove down to Malmö. So that was 15.39. Driving here takes an hour, around an hour, to the hacking office. SVT, SVT set up a, uh, an office that should look cool on TV. So this is some uh, old warehouse type of stuff. We were encouraged to bring some uh, mascots. So Jesper brought a mascot here. This is a smart. Uh, what do you call it, teddy bear, that can talk to the parents, can talk to the kids. It's just that this has been hacked and owned and uh, now can say bad stuff. Uh, and uh, yeah, so we're sitting there, uh, we're on the internal network, we're four people, everyone is going crazy, someone likes Linux, so they're looking for Linux servers. I'm, I like Windows, so I go for the AD and Windows clients. Etc. And one of the more, uh, what do you say, potent things to do when you're on an internal network is to, to mess with name resolution for Windows machines. Because if Windows machines can't find a name in the DNS, they will shout out, who is this computer? 
And what you do then is like, that's me. And then you ask the client to authenticate, which means that you get an authentication hash. Now, just, this is just a random hash. This is not the real one. But if you do this attack, you get hashes that you can, again, try to crack. So if you do this on the local network, pretty quickly you will have 5, 10, 20 user hashes that are domain account hashes. We got this, and one of them had a really simple password. Having one account in, in the domain makes you able to query Active Directory for all the information except secrets. So what you can then do, well, first you have a ha need to have a hamburger. Uh, Fedora got a lot of our money during this time. This was COVID times, and restaurants closed at 7, I think. But if you can query uh, Active Directory, then you can get Kerberos tickets for different services like SQL Server. Then you can get another hash to crack. So if you, you can ask for a Kerberos ticket for that SQL SQL Server, and that Kerberos ticket will, ticket will be encrypted with a password of the service account. Which means if you have done two things, you have set up a service account with a bad password, and you have given that account uh, a lot of privileges, then you set yourself up for massive failure quickly, which they had done. So we cracked it pretty quickly, and I had the password, and at this point I was going to authenticate to the domain controller using a Python script, and if it returns yellow, saying pwned, then it means you own that machine, and if you own the domain controller, then they are screwed, because then you're a domain admin. And that's exactly what happened. And the time when this happened was 1840. So we plugged our Raspberry Pi in 1539, and 1840 we were domain admins. So now we just, now we needed to spend some time figuring out what servers they use to store the uh, customer uh, database and the points that we had as targets. This actually, this is not uncommon. This is pretty quick. In my, in my experience, but it's, uh, it's not uncommon. And of course, I like to extract all the hashes from the Active Directory, try to crack as many as possible. And because good TV, uh, we printed them on a piece of paper and delivered it to the IT manager in an envelope. Um, and on the last page, it said domain admins. Allow a few plain text passwords there. And every credit to Richard and Helsing Boysen, but he said um, in the pre-interview that he did not think we're going to succeed with our network attack. And I think this we, uh, a lot of us probably suffer from this. It's not going to happen to me kind of thing. So even though you don't do a lot of security work, even though you don't have a huge defensive organization, maybe you don't have any defensive security people in, in your co company, probably a lot of people, including IT, Managers think we, they're gonna, not going to be able to hack us. Uh, it's getting near the end of this presentation, but uh, we had a lot of fun doing this, uh, these TV series or these episodes, but we thought we need to have some fun with SVT as well. So at some point, they... Uh, they asked us for some script or code or something to put into these. This is uh, to put into one of the screens, either in the beginning or in the end. So this is uh, this is the what do you call the after text, the end slide, the end uh, seconds of every, every episode. Can you see something interesting here? Yeah, there's base 64. There's a base 64 encoded string just above the the text there. So they, they asked for that, they asked for some code, they got some code, and they put it in the TV series. And SVT, I mean, they're pretty strict that they want to control everything because they own it and the, they want to con have control over yeah, what happens, what is seen. But uh, we told them on, uh, on the premiere day, we told them that uh, this base 64 string is, uh, resolves to a URL that we own. So, uh, and they were like, uh, yeah, they were a bit nervous, but they, they took it uh, they took it like champs. So if you follow, if you decode that uh, base64 string, you end up at hackad.tv, where you can find some small hacking challenges and some trivia. 
And if there are some lessons to be learned, you probably know this, most of you already, but passwords suck. If you only rely, if you have systems or accounts that only rely on passwords, you need to definitely make sure that they are, that you're using passphrases. But obviously you should use a second factor, something you have. If, if a password is something you know, a second factor is something you have. It could be something that you are, like a fingerprint. Use a password manager. And this, I think, is important. Assume breach. Assume that your network is insecure. Build your systems like it. If you build an application for internal use, build it securely, even though it's going to be only internally used. Security is not a product. It's a process. I'm pretty sure this door uh, is certified according to a bunch of standards. It's probably a really, really good door. But I'm also pretty sure that the person who decided that they, they want to put it there didn't think it through properly. Pretty sure they didn't have a pen test on that door. Uh, I think it's a good analogy with, with the world uh, of IT as well. Yeah, thank you very much. And thanks to all the people who wanted to be hacked. And we have some time for questions. If someone wants to ask a question in a microphone, otherwise, yeah, over there. Well, wait, wait for the microphone. Yeah, I'm just a little bit curious about the first uh, case you had. How aware was the people about that they were potentially, yeah. that you were after them? Yeah, the, good, yeah, the first uh, girl, for example. I mean, she maybe if she didn't knew that you were after her, she would have actually yeah. bait sometime. Uh, of course, they knew that they were uh, they could be hacked. They agreed to this. I'm not sure exactly how the contract looked with the celebrities, but they, uh, absolutely they knew that something were going to happen to them. Um, uh, the same with the 20 private people. They signed some kind of contract where the fine print, print somewhere said you might be hacked. I'm pretty sure they didn't read it, but uh, they signed it. Any other questions? Otherwise, just uh, grab me uh, afterwards if you want to talk about something that I talked about. Thank you very much.